Good hey, morning. Cosmo. So what's for breakfast? Well, come on, have a look at this pot here. <laughs> we have uh, boiled eggs, okay. and we have uh, burritos, uh, which are really good. You just put it in there, fold it up, and as a special treat, I've been growing sprouts on the road. These are alfalfa sprouts. I have a sprouting lid, and uh, you can have fresh salad on the road. So that's uh, my uh, my breakfast for today, and uh, a little uh, a little wake me up, which is. Uh, uh, green tea and bourbon. No, it's just green tea. Uh, so here's to your health. Oh, very good. Looks healthy. No, very good. No, oh, oh, I feel great now. Hey everybody, today we are taking the tour of the Vistabule Teardrop Trailers Galley Space. Now whether you're in the market for a Vistabule or not, I can't overstate how important these galleys are. Most of us end up using a pavilion, a canopy, a screen room to turn this space into our outdoor campsite. So uh, who better to teach us about this than one of the most famous teardrop owners on the planet, Cosmo Weems. So hit that subscribe button. It's the only thing that allows us to make more content here. And let's check out this vestibule galley. Uh, back here, you know, the heart of a teardrop trailer is really the kitchen. Um, really, this is um, what I separates it from tent camping and a little besides the mattress and the beautiful hard shell and all that. You know, the kitchen really makes the whole thing livable. And one thing to really look for in a trailer is how well does the kitchen work? Um, when I first got mine, I had a different configuration, and I realized even though Vistabule recommended this configuration, I chose a different one, being the wise guy I am, and I realized they were correct. And I went back and I asked them to change it to, the, uh, to this configuration, which is very successful. And what makes it successful is stuff is not in the way of each other for the most part. Very little when you use it is in the way. I have, uh, on the surface, you know, I have a, a nine gallon water tank, which is not very big, but it's enough for me. I, just, I strictly use that water only for washing. I don't do washing dishes and all that. I don't drink that. It's a uh, water tanks tend to get a little funky after a while, even though I sanitize it. I've got uh, nooks and crannies for storage, uh, you know, shelving. I have a built in stove, propane stove fed from the front tank. Uh, Dometic works very well. Um, counter space is critical. Vistibule to increase counter space. Um, I've had three chefs in here cooking at once. We made dinner for six. We we're out camping in the rain, and uh, what an experience! But we were able to pull it off. You know, I can get a little more counter space by putting this cutting board on, which is a nice feature. You can probably get this for almost any sink, you know. Um, but it's real good. Water pump is here. Uh, the water pump is actually lives down here and uh, storage space is here. And uh, this is a, uh, a, a dish drainer. And uh, amazingly, this dish drainer fits right over the sink so I can dry things there. Uh, I also have wash tubs, which I use as spillover. So this all works out pretty well for me. And uh, up in here, we have a storage space. This came with a rack for wine bottles, you know, for wine bottles in there. Uh, you know, Vistabule uh, trying to encourage me to have a good time. But, uh, and you can put olive oil in there too, if you choose. But, but this opens up and you have, I, ha I arranged it with my silverware in here, a mirror here, uh, a magnetic thing for my, uh, for my timer. And that uh, allows me to, uh, and this works out pretty good. Now, my friend Jen, who lives in a teardrop trailer, she's a full timer in a camp in. She suggested uh, that I was wasting space here. She said, get yourself a round cup type thing and put all your silverware in there and you'll free up all that space. Well, you know, it is a true, it's a good idea, but I just like my current configuration. But Jen's been a great person to help me. You have storage down here. Uh, we have uh, the uh, storage drawers. And uh, these are absolute must-have uh, for me. These wash tubs, they really work well. They uh, allow uh, me to wash things. I can use them if I have excess for like dinner for six. I can use this to help dry things. Uh, I can dry my silverware in there. So I have all my pots and pans down there. Uh, a couple of drawers worth of stuff, lids. Silverware goes here. Um, this mat, for when I'm cooking, 
I can just put my lids on here and because it's dimpled or waffled, uh, the water doesn't run all over the counters. Now, I just want to point out that um, on my channel, I notice a lot of people, maybe 20 or 30 percent of people, order these trailers without a stove or a sink. They want the simplicity, they're willing to use a backpacking stove or something like that and use these wash tubs for dishes and they just carry a water jug. And uh, there's no, uh, it's what works for you on these things. Um, I have a pass through here, which is unique to uh, this trailer. And it's, uh, these screens come out and I can pass stuff through to there. So if I'm inside doing some important video editing, <laughs> my girlfriend can, you know, can give me, you know, some, uh, some beer or something if I need it badly enough, you know, or some hard apple cider, which I like, you know. Uh, so that works out. The whole thing is has wiring for AC. The AC is only active when you plug into a campground. That's when the AC activates. So my trailer, because I'm off grid a lot, I typically stick with 12 volt and USB, you know, 5 volt. That's typically how my whole trailer runs. And when I buy things, I always keep in mind that nowadays, you know, I want to try and concentrate on USB and 12 volt devices because that's what I'm going to be charging with. But now I have Jackeries, and Jackeries changed everything for me. Uh, so. All the 12 volt on here is powered by the battery in the trailer. And I have, you know, lighting up here, which is quite bright uh, at night. It's great. I also put on a, uh, a motion detector light right here. It runs on AAA batteries. At night, when I open this up and walk under here, the lights go on. A little light goes on, a courtesy light, which just makes it really easy to find my way around in here. If I need some nachos or something or whatever it is, some avocado toast. In here, uh, this is a feature which I really like about Vistabule is they give you a huge space down here to do what you want with it. And uh, in my case, I decided to put in a 12 volt uh, Dometic CFX35 as the model. Shot up a lot in price, but uh, it's an electric refrigerator, a true refrigerator, not just a cooler. And it, you can freeze with this or you can use it as a refrigerator, but not both at the same time. It's not a partition one. Bigger models, you can get half refrigerator, half, uh, half freezer, which would allow me to take vanilla ice cream, uh, which I can't do here. And I put some Reflexit on here. Reflexit offers almost no R value of insulation, but it does give you solar radiation reflectivity. So when I'm out and I have this out in the sun, the sun hits here and reflects off of it, and it helps prevent the, this thing from heating up. I actually have a piece for the top also, and uh, you know, in case I'm uh, out in very hot weather, uh, you know, and I wanna have that protection from the sun as much as possible. It works good under all conditions. This particular, refrigerator, the exhaust comes out of here. It pulls from the back and exhausts to the front. And so I, I have it so it'll exhaust here. I made sure that I have airspace all around it so I have, uh, it won't overheat when I'm driving. And typically when I'm driving, I leave this open like that so I get ventilation in here. Um, but because of this design, when I went camping in the winter, I took this out and I stored my water in here. And I was down in seven degree temps at night uh, this winter. And uh, what happened was the water in here stayed liquid. I got a little bit of ice on top and not much. It primarily stayed liquid because when I close this hatch, the trailer is heated and a little of that heat seeps back here. And it, uh, it prevented it from freezing, which was very good for me. So that's uh, something to think about if you're an all season camper. And um, you know, in the kitchen just, so when you get one of these, you know, put yourself in it. When you're looking at a trailer, put yourself in there and start using it in your mind on how you're gonna make things and look. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, so these drawers slide. In order to access the refrigerator, I have to cut off access to the other parts. But that's not usually a big deal because I go in the refrigerator, I get what I want and I, uh, I close it up and then I have full access to my pots and pans and things like that. So look for something like that with blockers. You want to eliminate blockers. If I have the vestibule cutting board, which they over-engineer everything. Look at the side, you can, you can build a house out of this thing. It's like an inch thick, you know. But I actually had to route in a, a groove here so if I'm cutting something, the juices won't, uh, won't run off of it. But if I'm using this over here, which gives me more counter space, well, of course I can't open this anymore and I have to 
think about it. So this trailer has minimal blocking, which I really love. And I've seen some trailers that are really terrible. You know, if you're cooking in there, you're going to be very frustrated. So keep that in mind. Um, when you look at your trailer, you know, I mean, we, we hate, right? We both, and part of the reason I'm here is Brian and I both agree that people, we want you to get the right thing. I'm not saying this is the right trailer for you, but we want to just show you what we've observed to look out for. We're not experts, we're just guys having fun. So, you know, keep that in mind when you look at your trailer. You know, if you have to live with some horrible feature, it's going to annoy you the whole time you have it, you know? So, uh, so that's good. You know, and one thing about, you know, it's raining out now, and Brian and I are standing around out here in the rain, like a couple of dummies, but we enjoy this kind of stuff. Don't underestimate these lids. There's a lot of different configurations of trailers. These lids do keep rain off of you, and uh, they help. Vertical rain, yes. Horizontal rain, no. And I have wings that go on here on the sides, and they help also. And I'm sure I, I have a four-legged pavilion that goes around here, which will help me quite a bit. And recently, I had a clam shelter engineered to, you know, recustom changed so it would fit over this. Uh, Judith McConville on the uh, uh, Vestibule Forum uh, and Rob Coates helped me, uh, helped me uh, with that process. They, uh, Judith uh, dreamed that idea up, which was brilliant. Thank you, Judith. You're just an angel, you know. Dinner's on me when we get together. So, uh, the, you know, so these, these configurations are nice. You want to think about that stuff. You have to like the weather if you're going to get a trailer like this. There's, you know, <laughs> and I like it. So uh, coming around here. So typical RV uh, utility access. Over here, I can put in water. I have a right angle funnel, which is you, know, you can certainly need one of those if you're going to go off grid. You can put a water filter in it or whatever. And I also have a public utility. I can hook a hose up here if I'm at a campground. And I turn a valve in here and I have city water then. And I unlimited water and I can use that. Now, again, this trailer only has a nine gallon tank. And I also chose to have a gray water tank put in. The gray water tank catches whatever's coming out of the sink and it goes into a gray water tank. Now, um, you know, if you're making curry or something, you don't want to send that down to drain because you're going to have this thing burping curry odor the rest of the week, you know, and, uh, you know, you want to be careful. You don't want to send food bits down there. So you want to clean your things up. You know, I, I'll take something, I'll hose it off out here. Uh, sink sprayer is a good thing to have. Uh, and then I'll send the water down there. Another point about these sinks, this pump puts out a gallon a minute. It's a nine gallon tank. You're gonna get nine minutes of water and you're gonna burn right through that unless you're real careful. So I spray something, scrub it down, spray it again, uh, carry a, uh, a spritzer, which I use quite a bit for my hands. I use it for, uh, for rinsing things lightly. Um, anything to conserve water. You know, here we have all the water we want. There's a pond right there and uh, beautiful mountain springs here. But uh, when you're out camping off grid, you need to uh, consider your water consumption. Water is a big limiting factor. It's not food and it's not electricity. I can generate, you know, all that can bring a lot of food. You know, if I was going off grid for a while, pull this out of here, I could fill this up with canned and dry goods. I could stay off food grid for a long time, but I still need water. And I carry water filtration equipment and all that, but I, I, I'd rather not use it. I, I, most places I just go out you know, it's a trailer. I'm not backpacking. I'll go out. I'll see somebody on their front yard. Like, hey, you know, can I use your hose? You know, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, as you meet people. What are you doing? Where are you going? It's it's always a lot of fun. So it's uh, it's a real adventure vehicle. Mm -hmm.